Model steam engine live steam tests, part 5. The steam tests of two Stuart steam engines fitted in some fine old vintage model boats. Also included is some of the sailing test footage. I worked on these two model boats in 2017 and they were both built by the same man. And at that time he was 93 years old. But these boats were built when he was much younger, both to a very good standard. The first one has a steel hull and even empty the boat was very heavy. I suggested a smaller steam engine, but no, he wanted a Stuart Double Ten. In this first section of the video, you are about to see edited clips from my series Refurbishing a Vintage Model Steamboat. It is time now to do a steam test. I've not had the engine in steam at all. It's run on compressed air many times. I've had the boiler in steam in a previous test if you've been watching the series, but now it's time to do it for real to just make sure everything works. And the first thing to do is to put some heat insulation between the burner and the gas tank. And this is to prevent the burner from actually touching the gas tank in the boat. Irrespective of the type of radio control unit you're using, you must always turn the transmitter on first, followed by the receiver. And I'm doing this at the moment. The next step is to check the range of the radio equipment. It's no good if the boat sails into the middle of the lake and disappears. Here you see the rudder moving back and forth and currently I am sat right at the bottom of the garden, and that's about 86 feet away. With the radio reception confirmed, it's now time to oil up the engine. For this I'm using steam oil on all the bearing surfaces. I generally do this on small engines because they do really get quite hot. And now I can throw the switch on the transmitter, which allows gas through to the burner. As soon as I get a tiny little bit of pressure, like 20 psi, I open the regulator and the engine runs. And once we have some good pressure in the boiler, the engine runs really well. So well in fact, that I left the engine running for quite a while, far longer than you see here on the video, and I kept switching between forward and reverse. And there was no problem at all. It did just what I asked it to do. It's time now to fit the safety valve cover, because I want the safety valve to blow off through this small pipe. I actually dropped the working pressure of the boiler down to 75 psi from about 80, and it blows off fine, and the pressure reduces. Here you can see the propeller spinning, first fast, and now very, very slow indeed. I took some time to try and get the alignment as near as possible with the existing prop shaft, and here you can see the propeller spinning quite sweetly. And it's really not running on much pressure at all, the regulator's nearly shut. I ran the boat for about an hour on the bench, but I didn't want to get the hull too warm, so I threw the switch, which switched the gas off, and now I have to drain the exhaust condenser. This is done by opening this small valve, and that lets the water out. By running the engine, the exhaust back pressure actually pumps the water out into a suitable receptacle. And the last thing to do is to disconnect the gas tank. It's absolutely essential not to rely on the small radio controlled valve to keep the gas off. The gas tap needs removing entirely from the gas tank, as you can see here. Then it's quite safe. Whenever the engine has been run on steam, it is absolutely essential that you remove the water residue from within the engine, particularly if it's a cast iron cylinder engine like this Stuart Double Ten. The top of this Stuart displacement lubricator is threaded 5 16 by 32 threads per inch, so I quickly made a small adapter to allow me to connect a piece of silicone rubber pipe, which allows me to pipe some compressed air into the engine which first of all blows away the water, then I introduce some steam oil to the pipe, and I blow this through the engine. And this gets rid of the water, and I've never had any problems by doing it this way. Also, in 2017, I worked on this boat. A very well-built, open steam launch. If you want to see more, please watch the full series. This is a lovely old boat. It's possibly, I would think, around 50 years old, and the builder of this superb model is the same person who built the steam ship that I worked on a short while ago. And in common with the steam ship, the attention to detail is very good indeed. This winch, for instance, only seems to go in one direction. It doesn't need to go in one direction because it's just a dummy that sits on the deck. But it's careful attention to detail on things like the winch and the rear seating, as you can see here, as well as the general build quality, which is absolutely wonderful, that sets this boat aside from others. And the builder also machined the castings and built the engine. 
and this steam engine is a Stuart Models twin compound launch engine. This means that the steam is used twice. First of all it goes into a small high pressure cylinder, which then in turn exhausts into a larger cylinder which is the low pressure cylinder. This means that the engine is more efficient and will use less steam. So the combination of a compound engine coupled to a large steam boiler should make for a very free steaming model boat. As you can see by what's on screen at the moment, the pressure is rising steadily. So what I'm going to do is give the engine a quick try on this very low pressure. Just under 25 psi on the clock, but by the time I get round to fitting a silicone pipe, I'm sure it will be slightly more than that. So I fit the silicone rubber pipe and open the valve. I only open the valve very slightly and then I give the engine a push because it's a compound and it doesn't always self-start. And off it goes and it's running quite well. I'm really pleased with this. It's not a good idea to use silicone rubber tubing to connect a boiler of this pressure and temperature to a steam engine. But for me it's just very convenient. The safety valve blows off and the pressure drops to around about 65 psi before the safety valve snaps shut and in no time at all the boiler pressure is back to its target of 80 pounds per square inch. I don't like this steam valve very much, it's really difficult to open it because it's so small and of course it's very hot indeed. I may change this valve yet, time will tell, or I might just put a bigger hand wheel on it. On this second run of the steam engine it's still running very well and I'm quite pleased with it. And the engine seems to be quite economical as far as steam consumption is concerned. If you look at the boiler's pressure gauge, it's not making much difference to it. As this open steam launch is a sort of an African Queen type model, in fact it does look quite like African Queen, it's definitely not a flash steam hydroplane. So what I'm looking at at the moment with the pressure relative to the speed of the engine, and do bear in mind that the valve on the outlet of the boiler is just cracked open, it's not open very much at all. I did try opening the valve slightly more to let more steam to the engine, but all that happened was the silicone rubber piping flew off the engine. And as it passed my hand, it left a nice mark. So that means the steam's hot enough, it's not the best way to test it, but the steam really is very hot that's coming out of this boiler. I refurbished these steamboats a while back, and we've had to wait quite a long time before we could sail them, owing to the great age of the owner of the boats, and the fact that the weather had to be at least somewhere near respectable. But today wasn't too hot, it was not raining for a change, but it was very windy, and the metal boat is very heavy indeed, and it sits very low in the water, particularly at the stern. So after the first circuit of the lake, with the stern almost under the water, we brought the boat in, and added some ballast in the bow. And this levelled it up a bit, I was quite surprised. It really is extremely heavy, it's almost a two-man lift. I thought it was going to do a Titanic, but no it didn't, it sailed very well. In this close-up you can really see how low the stern of the boat is in the water, and this is when we were bringing the boat in to add some more ballast to the bow. This is the open steam launch that I recently renovated. I really like this boat, it's beautifully made. It's fitted with a Stuart compound launch engine, which is not fitted with reversing gear, and because it's a compound it isn't self-starting. Both of these are very old model steamboats and today was just a test to see how they sailed. I think most of the time these boats are going to be display items, so it's sailing quite nicely at the moment. And what's this? There's always somebody with a bigger boat. It's a good job this boat was available, because we had to rescue this boat a couple of times, because the steam pressure got a little bit low, and the engine stopped, and then it wouldn't self-start. This boat also needs some more ballast, but we'd used up all our ballast, including a bag full of coins, to ballast the other boat. I thoroughly enjoyed today, it was a pleasure playing with these boats on the water. And that is it for this video, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.